Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to the conclusion of this tutorial series where we're going to be covering some light maps. Um, and I'm going to go through some of the basic principles of how to set up your light maps, um, and then I'm going to show you how to, to set up your renderings and get them to come out, you know, looking you know, pretty nice. This shouldn't be too long of a tutorial. I'm hoping to try to keep it short. Uh, so I am going to move pretty rapidly through some things um, like the actual UV coordinates of the light maps. I want to make sure that you have a quick understanding of that, but I don't want to belabor it. Um, I'm kind of assuming at this point that you know how to deal with UV maps uh, and, and, and you know, what that means. Um, so all it's really going to show you is, is I'm going to show you how to create a new channel on those light maps. Uh, or uh, create a new channel that you can create your light maps on, and I'm going to kind of leave it to you to figure out the best ways to do that, but I will give you some basic pointers. Anyway, so um, so let's actually get into that. Um, uh, so here we have a scene, and it's all, it's all you know, nicely rendered, and we have, you know, really nice shading going on, and we're going to go into, you know, how I did these, these darker areas in the corners, uh, and how to adjust those, so like right now they're a little too dark, so if I want to go in here, I can, I can, you know, go into these um, uh, basic settings for our scene and do adjustments, but we also have uh, you know baked light, which you can see is actually baked into the surfaces of things. Okay, um, and those you know if we look underneath that lamp, there's a, a shadow there that's built in, um, and it's it's actually you know rendered into the object. So I'm going to show you some of those uh, you know how how we set that up and how we get these really nice light bakes uh, to come out, and uh, you know basically we're just going to run through the whole process of. Uh, how to finalize your scene and get it looking, you know, the best it can look. All right, so uh, so let's get started. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the uh, light mapping. Okay, so I have uh, this object over here in Maya, and uh, here we have it. Okay, now if we were to look at this object, uh, we're going to see that it's already got a UV channel. Um, and if we were to look at our sets, we have you know map one, which is probably what most of your objects have, but we also have this other light map. Uh, uh, um, layer on it, okay, or channel, okay, and, and this is going to show you how to kind of create that channel. So I'm just going to use a polygon and I'm going to create a box, and here's our box, right? And uh, if we were to go ahead and do an automatic unwrap, right, we would have our our box and it would have UV, and if we go to UV set editor, we would see that we have map one on this box, okay? Um, but what we want to do is we want to create another channel that will be our light map channel, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go map, and then we're going to just go copy, okay? Um, and that'll give us a new channel that's got exactly the same setup as the map one, okay? And all we're then going to do is just say uh, light map. And I just double clicked that to rename it, by the way, okay? So now we've got light map, and if we were to look in our UV editor, we would see that we have, uh, you know, our light map and we have the normal map and if we were to move one of these guys okay um we would have you know the light map would be different now than the map one okay so as you can see they're they're different they're not the same they were just copied from the same template okay uh so one of the things that i like to do on my uv maps is to try to make sure as much of it is connected as is possible while also keeping you know the majority of my my space available okay so you know basically it's it's going to be resolution dependent just like any other uv map and it's going to be rendering in your shadows into this uh set of coordinates so you just want to make sure that uh you have one ample space between your objects and two you want to try to connect things where you want smooth shading to go so let's say i knew that you know this part of my object oops you know, this part of my object was going to be kind of uh, really obvious and in the view, okay? What I would want to do is I would want to, um, you know, merge these edges. So I would go uh, move and merge, uh, which I can't seem to find here. There it is. Okay, so oops, move and merge. And now I have that as one merged face. So when, this, when the shadows come, they're gonna shadow wrap nicely around these two edges and not leave weird seams and weird, you know, weird things. Um, this is especially true on you know, more smooth objects where you've got, um, I'm just gonna delete some of these faces. You know, uh, let's say we had um, a bevel on here. With a bunch of segments, right? Um, 
Now this I would definitely want to have smoothed around the surface. I would not want this to be broken at any point in it. Uh, I wouldn't want it to be, you know, like this. Basically is not what I would want. And cut UV edges, where are you? Here we go. Cut UV edges. And here, this is not what I would want, okay? Because I might get a really harsh uh, shadow seam in between the two parts. So instead, I want to make sure that they're nicely, uh, you know, moved and sewn together. And I would actually even do polygons, unfold, and make sure that it is uh, nice and clean, you know? This way we have a nice, smooth unfold. And of course, you want to do your typical uh, checks on whether or not it is... Um, you know, square. So to kind of illustrate how this would work in a uh, in like a real object or a real environment, um, here we can go ahead and take a look at this uh, record player cabinet. And if we were to go into the the uh, materials and we check out the light maps, uh, we'll see that all these little front boards actually have you know kind of wrapping around that front edge. Okay, and I do that pretty much everywhere um, on every one of these, and even on these sideboards. Um, I'm doing a full wrap on there as well. So it's kind of wrapping like so. All right, so I'm getting that full full wrap kind of concept happening wherever I can, all right? Um, I really just want to make sure that I don't get those seams on those corners. Uh, they, they have a general tendency to not look so good. All of this is extremely uh, relative to your current situation. Uh, there will be times where having them connected will be beneficial. And sometimes when having them separated will be beneficial. Uh, you know, you want to experiment on this and start to learn what is best. Um, doing really good light maps is almost an art form in and of itself. And, um, you know, taking the time to do this well really pays off dividends because um, it, it, it just makes everything a little bit smoother and a little bit cleaner in your models. And you end up not fighting with them, uh, which, which you might do with, um, you know, with just doing it really quick or really sloppy. Um, now. That said, uh, there are times when you're going to want to have a very easy unwrap. It's a very rectangular object or a square object, and you don't really need to go into the details, and you just want it to be done quickly. Or, you know, maybe maybe getting perfect shadow maps or not is super important to your project. That could be the case, too. Or maybe you're under deadlines, and you need to get things done quickly. Stingray has a way of doing all of this automatically, okay? So if we jump into Stingray, and we right click on this and go ahead and go into the unit editor, we will see that inside of the object we have this generate UVs tab. Okay, now if you don't have a UV coordinate setup, you can simply just go ahead and turn this on. So if you don't have a light map channel, just turn that on. Okay, um, like I said, it's going to do an automatic job of it. Um, it may not be as good as if you manually do it yourself. Uh, but very often it'll be pretty good, okay? So you can often get away with just using the Generate UV Unwrap. And again, that's almost what I would recommend you try first. If it comes out really good, then you don't have to go any further. Um, but if it doesn't go really good, then, you know, bring it back into Maya, add your UV channels and your light maps and, and do it there. It really depends on how you want to handle it. I personally always make my light maps, but, you know, if you're just looking to, you know, learn and try to get this, you know, figured out and you don't want to go through the effort of making all that stuff, um, you, like I said, you can just select it and turn on generate UV maps and it'll automatically uh, do the unwraps for you and when you bake, it'll work fine, okay? So, um, so you have those two different ways of doing it. You can do it the automatic method by simply selecting this or in Maya, um, you can you know create a secondary UV channel um, in your UV editor, UV set editor. You would just create a secondary channel. I name mine light map, um, but again, the, the name doesn't matter. It's just uh, what I like to do. Um, and then you would be able to just import this, and you wouldn't have to do anything. It would automatically bake a light map when you press bake. Okay, so uh, so those are the two different ways: automatic and manual. Now, coming back into Stingray, um, what we're going to want to do now is just kind of get our scene set up so that we can get some nice lighting um, and get some get some good good renders coming out. Okay, so um, I'm just going to show you some basic things that I've done in order to get this scene to kind of look uh, look pretty cool. Um, so what I've done is I've basically set up like a little light box. Okay, so outside of the scene, um, I have. Uh, let me turn on my gizmos, view, gizmos, 
And now we should see my gizmos. Oh, I'm sorry, never mind. Uh, I don't have to go outside. I put the directional light inside. Okay, so this is my directional light. And this directional light <clears throat> is gonna be my primary shadow caster, okay? Uh, so this is giving us these kind of nice lights um, coming in through the outside. Uh, and they give us these kind of like, um, you know, the window lighting kind of look, okay? So I've got these holes cut out in my area. And how I basically set up this room was just made uh, one model that is uh, basically double-sided. So if I rotate this guy, you'll see what I mean. Um, I've got the, the ceiling or the, the painted wall material on one side, and I've got the wood on the other. So if you see, it's just... Uh, a simple tiling system and I just kind of you know just duplicated them a bunch and made my my room uh, in this regard okay so uh, so I just made a, a quick kind of light box uh, for this scene to sit in um, now for the lighting um, as you can see we've got some pretty complex lighting going on on this wall we've got this kind of really cool looking uh, very natural looking light splash uh, coming from the lights. Now, there's a couple different ways we could do this, but because I'm baking the light and this is a light baking tutorial, I wanted to kind of show you um, the way that uh, I thought was the nice way to do it for, for the scene. So what I've got is basically a, a bunch of spotlights sitting over the top of each other. Okay, so these are all spotlights. Each one of these is a spotlight. Um, this one on the bottom is the most narrow. Um, and let me see if I can actually hide some of these so that we can kind of go through them step by step uh, and what they're doing. So this first one is my primary beam spotlight, okay? And uh, that is giving me that center shaft of light uh, at the top part, okay? And um, inside the light, I have it set to baked, okay? That's the really important part, that we set it to baked. And you'll notice that if we turn off baked, it'll actually get brighter, okay? That's because now it's rendering the light real time, okay? But the whole point of baked lighting is that we're not gonna render this real time. We're gonna render this um, only once, and then we're gonna basically, you know, project that information onto our light maps that we've created. So for anything that's not moving, you know, you want to put this, this, you know, if you have a light that's moving, you don't want to bake it. But if it is you know, going to sit stationary, uh, then you can bake the light. And when you bake the light, you get this really nice, you know, this, this nice creation of light that'll be baked into your texture maps. Um, so you're not paying for that computation real time uh, when the engine is running. Okay, so you want to bake as much light as possible, okay, especially if it's a shadow caster. Um, and on this one, I didn't actually turn on shadow casters because I didn't want it to get interrupted by anything that's inside this lamp. I just wanted that nice, you know, basically creating modeled light. So, um, so I didn't want any kind of shadows to interfere uh, with this lighting that I'm doing. It's very specific, okay? So, uh, so that's the first one. Um, I'm just gonna go down them sequentially. So the second one, uh, I'll unhide that one. So this is more of a wide spot, okay? So again, this is a spotlight, so we can look and see that it's a spotlight. And I've got uh, it also baked, okay? Then I've got my third light, and uh, my third light I will unhide as well um, by pressing the H key. And this one is also a spotlight. And again, this one's getting a little wider. And basically that's all it is, is a series of spotlights that are just kind of moved a little bit and adjusted in their, in their, um, in their uh, fall off. You know, basically adjust their fall off, their end fall off and their intensity and their color. And uh, by doing that, I'm creating a bunch of these different kind of spotlight fall off angles, okay? And that's what's giving me that nice, uh, that nice lighting setup. Okay, so um, it's actually really straightforward. And then one of them I have facing downward, which, uh, let me see if I can find it. Yep, this is the downward facing one. And this one I do have cast shadows on because I wanna get that natural fall off from the table itself. And any, you know, any lighting in here, I want to also get the proper shading. So we get this nice shadow here, you know, we're getting some other nice shadows from it. Okay, so this one I do wanna have a fall off on, I mean, a, a shadow. But, you know, your scene, you're gonna to wanna to adjust these things as, it, as is according to your needs, right? So um, I'm just giving you the basic idea of how to create one of these nice light splashes. Um, and, you know, that's how I did it. I did it with a bunch of different um, uh, spotlights with different cone angles, okay? So they're all spotlights and they're all just adjusted slightly to give me this kind of uh, layering effect of different, you know, um, 
light fall offs. Okay, so that was basically it. Like I said, this is the primary light of the scene, um, and it's what's going to be giving me most of my bounced light. Um, and this is also a directional light. So this is you can only have one directional light, and this is my directional light. And if I were to move this, let me let me not bake it. Oh, it is set to not baked. So if I move this around, you'll see that I'm actually getting that light to move with the uh, with the view. Okay, so that's my primary kind of directional light that kind of sets the sets the mood a little bit. All right, so uh, so that's that. And then I've got one omni light in the scene, which is um, going to be uh, kind of just illuminating the interior of the room and just giving me my soft light for the uh, for the majority of this of this room. Okay, and from that I get you know a really nice light bake. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. And here you can see, you know, we're getting really nice shadows in here. And, you know, we're getting, you know, some nice wall shading in the, on the walls and the corners. Now the corner stuff and the wall stuff, um, I want to show you that too. So if we go into our shading environment, we have some other tools that we can use for kind of post-process uh, shadows. Okay, and these are called uh, screen space ambient occlusion. So if I go into my default shading environment and then click on screen space ambient occlusion, we can adjust these qualities, um, you know, the quality, the radius, the intensity to get more or less of what we want. Like right now, I feel like this is really dark in these corners. So I'm probably going to lower that, um, that intensity down a little bit. Okay, and these numbers go really quick. So you have to be very gentle with them. But that feels a lot more natural to me. Um, it's not nearly as, as dark and you know, heavy as it was. But um, you might also find that you know, reducing the radius is a benefit, you know, so you get a little bit less radius on it. Um, that can also help define that space some. Um, but yeah, you can, you can kind of tinker with these uh, settings in here to help get those edging uh, qualities to come the way you want them. Um, we can also adjust our, our exposure to get different lighting qualities. So, you know, this is basically going to ramp up our brightness or ramp down our brightness. So if we want like something really dark and moody, we can, we can just kind of play with this singular exposure setting uh, to get what we want. Um, on this scene, I think I found 2.5 to be the nicest. Yeah, 2.5 is awfully nice. Um, and it just gives me the, the amount of exposure that I'm looking for. Um, that is basically uh, it for for that kind of thing, um, excepting the actual baking itself. So let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look at what it's like to bake, um, you know, lighting on its own. Okay, so let me go ahead and save my level. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the same exact level. I'm just going to open it with uh, without light baking. Okay, so I have a version in here called not baked, and I'm going to open up the not baked version. And we're just going to take a look. So this is what the scene looks like without any lighting information applied. And as you can see, it's a pretty stark difference. So this is just using uh, the directional light. And although our other lights are in the scene, they haven't been baked yet. So here we can see we've got all of our lights, but, uh, but they aren't baked. Okay, so, um, so let's go ahead and start playing with some light baking and get this to look... Um, the way it did in the other scene. And it's it's already pretty much set up for that, but I just want to go through the baking process so you can kind of see uh, what's involved. Okay, so let's oh, go ahead and go Windows, Lighting, and uh, Bake Light Maps. So one last thing I want to reiterate is we've already got our light map set up. Everything is done in the scene, right? So, you know, all that sh stuff that I was just showing you was kind of preparation for being able to light bake. And you do have to make sure that those steps are cared for. So you're going to want to make sure your light maps are done, whether they're automatic or if you did the manual method. Either way, it doesn't matter, just so long as they're done. Um, and again, if it's the manual method, you might want to start, you know, you're going to do a, a lot of test bakes to see how they come out. And if you see any anomalies, you're going to want to go into those UV maps and correct them. If you do it the automatic method, there's really not much you can do. Um, if it looks good, it looks good. If it doesn't, you know, then you're going to want to go with the manual method and start tweaking your, your, UV, your UV maps. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we're assuming that at this point, everything is done. Okay. Every, every object in my scene has a light map and it's ready to be baked. 
Okay, so all I have to do now is hit this bake button and it'll go ahead and bake. But before I do that, I just wanna go through a couple uh, simple things, okay? So the first and most important one is this baker. Now, I'm using the Beast Baker for this scene, um, but you can also use the Stingray Beta Baker, okay? Um, it's a little easier, it's a, a lot faster, um, especially if you're doing kind of like low resolution bakes. Um, it'll use your GPU, so if you have a very powerful GPU, you might really like the Stingray Baker. Um, and, you know, it's very simple to adjust to. You can just, you know, increase your total number of sample passes is gonna increase your resolution quality, basically, um, or the, the quality of the bake. So this is just one number increase, and you, know, you put this to 1024 and it's gonna bake a lot better than 512. Um, it'll take longer, but it'll, it'll look better, okay? So um, your light map textile scale, this is how big is the map that it's actually rendering. Your skylight intensity is going to be how light, how bright is that outside lighting. Your indirect scale, your emissive scale, and your diffuse boost are all um, adjustments that you can make to increase uh, their their you know their namesake. So if you want the indirect scale to be increased, in other words, the bounce light. Um, if you want the bounce light to be brighter, you can raise this number. If you want your um, emissive scale, so anything that has an emissive light on it, you can you can boost that. Um, and your diffuse, you can increase the diffuse um, brightness as well. So here's three easy ways to adjust your 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 um, overall render qualities. Okay, so you'll want to tinker with those as you start out. But again, start all of these with one. Um, do your first test bake, see how it comes out, and then make these adjustments after that, okay? So um, so that's the, the Stingray Beta Baker. Now, um, you can just hit bake, and it'll go ahead and bake. In fact, I'll just do a low-quality bake on this one. So I'll do like a 128, and we'll do a really quick bake. All right, so bake, and let's see how she comes out. Okay, so uh, now that the light baking is complete, let's take a look at what we got. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the gizmos. And we're going to see that um, it, it, again, baked the light. We have some really nice lighting qualities going on. Um, but because of the way that I constructed this room, um, it's, it's not working so well with this specific, um, with this specific uh, renderer. So I probably wouldn't use this um, you know, for this scene uh, because of the way I constructed it. The Beast Baker is just going to do a far better job. And also just to note, the Stingray Baker is still in beta, so it is still coming along. But as you can see from a GPU bake, it came out, you know, pretty quickly. This, you know, this was about a five minute render on my computer and I have a GTX Titan. So, um, so, you know, with a GTX 1080, you're going to see even better uh, results. Um, and with other cards, you might see a little bit of a slower result. But in general, it's a very fast baker. Um, it does a beautiful job uh, for the most part. And... Um, you know, it gives really nice results. In this specific instance, this, the Beast Baker is gonna do a better job because again, like I said, I, I kind of designed this tutorial in mind for the Beast Baker. Okay, so now that we've seen that the, uh, the, the Stingray Baker has given us some good lighting effects, but isn't quite what we want, um, you know, it's nice to know that Stingray actually is a secondary baker, and uh, the, the Beast Baker is actually a, a, an incredibly good uh, baking utility, and will do a really, really nice job on your renders, uh, especially if you spend the time to really hone the numbers right. You will you will get incredibly good bakes from the Beast Baker. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice uh, baking utility, and it's built uh, into Stingray. So... Now we're going to go ahead and render the same scene, but we're going to do it in a different way. We're going to do it with the Beast Baker now. And what I wanted to show you is that uh, one thing we can do with, with the Beast Baker is we can actually put this on Live Bake, okay? And when we put it on Live Bake, we're actually going to get a real-time uh, baking uh, going on. So I'm going to put this on Low, and I'm going to set this to Live Bake. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit Bake, and we're going to see that it's actually going to bake this real-time um, as we just sit here and look at it. Um, now, the more, you know, the more horsepower you have to throw at this, the faster it'll happen, uh, just like, you know, any other computing operation, right? Like if you have more, more CPUs or more, you know, more, more uh, computing power, it's going to go quicker. Uh, but it gives you really nice real-time light baking, um, and it does it almost on the fly. So, you know, as you're moving around, it's, it's going to be always updating whatever hasn't been updated yet. So as you can see, it's filling in those areas. 
and we can really get a good idea of what our bake is going to look like um, for our high quality. So here we can see that this is kind of looking uh, pretty nice already and we're pretty happy with this. So all we would have to do is hit cancel and uh, you know turn off live bake and now we can go ahead and say all right let's let's do this nice okay so we'll set it on high and um, you know then we can go ahead and bake now um, another tool I want to bring your attention to is um, process explorer okay and I think I might have actually had you open this up once before but in here what we're going to be looking at um, is uh, this CPU graph okay and I want you to notice something when we do our renders um, as you can see you know just running um, uh, the tool of stingray uh, we're, we're constantly rendering we're doing a lot of things to, to really keep stingray fast right so it of course is going to use a lot of CPU power uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to minimize it and we're just going to take a look at that CPU graph and watch how it plummets Okay, so when you're using the Beast Baker, because it's going to be so CPU based, you're going to want to make sure that after you've baked, after you've hit the bake button, you want to minimize. You'll get a lot faster render times out of your out of your computer. Okay, so that's just something to note. Um, and once you know that, that's really kind of the big one. So let's go ahead and um, give this a bake, and uh, we'll see see how it goes. All right, so again, I'm going to hit bake. We're going to see that the baking procedure is going to start. And I'm just going to flip over to Process Explorer really quickly, and I'm going to look at that graph again, okay? And we should see that the computer is going to pin, right? So now we're using, you know, this much power for the green is basically what we're using for the render, and the red is what is idle process or, or not relative to the render, okay? So we're just going to hit minimize here, and we should see the, uh, the, the, the green, which is really our rendering process, as you can see, it says render tool 64. So all of our rendering is now going uh, to, you know, all of our CPU power is going to that render rather than to um, supporting uh, the, the, the programs, uh, including Stingray. Okay, so once we're back in Stingray, we can take a look at our results. And here we can see we're getting the really nice light, light cast uh, we're, we're getting these really nice shadows. We're getting very nice soft subtle lighting effects from the windows. So um, So yeah, you can see that the Beast Baker really does it quite a nice job of, uh, of giving you really clean quality uh, Shadow maps and this is just a simple scene But you know you can take this you know with more objects and more things for the shadows to really come into play uh, You'll see that you know Beast really does a wonderful job of all of your bounced light and you know, pretty much making your scene just look really quite nice. All right, and you can always increase your quality. Um, you can increase your minimum samples if you want to get rid of this kind of artifacting in the walls. Yeah, but you can definitely crank this quality up. Just be expectant to, to spend a lot more time, okay? You can also turn down this filter gain, which will dramatically increase the quality, but will also dramatically increase your time, okay? So uh, play with this filter gain very carefully, but the lower the number here, uh, the more quality. And on this minimum samples, the greater the number, the greater the quality. And on this variance, the, um, well, actually on, on this one, both of these samples are relative. So the higher the number and the higher the number. Uh, and your variance, uh, the lower the number. So if this was 0.01, it would default more to the min maximum samples uh, rather than the minimum samples. So that's just some basic food for thought. Um, and you can you know work with that information to get the renders to look the way you want them to. All right, so uh, that's going to conclude this tutorial, and I hope you now know how to uh, really make your 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 objects uh, get illuminated beautifully. All right, so I will talk to you on my next series, and uh, thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.